This is not going to be a second sermon of sorts, but this is uh, it's not as appropriate to come right after the gospel, but uh, something that um, I feel needs to be addressed. Um, several of us in this parish this week were involved in a, uh, in a uh, multi-person exchange of ideas and opinions, let's say. Um, the final comment on that thread, which I uh, um, did not think was prudent to further engage then, but now would be a good time to address certain things. Somebody had uh, pointed out to the rest of the group that they're sure of one thing. The Orthodox Church has just become as splintered as the Protestant Church that they left. Of course, this is in regard to, regards to political matters. So let it be said that the Orthodox Church is not splintered like the Protestant Church in purely political matters. There is no official political stance that an Orthodox Christian should have. A large part of the problem with certain Protestant churches is that since they've abolished the sacraments, other things have taken on sacramental value to them. Voting a certain way, keeping company or hanging out with certain individuals or groups, and shunning other people and groups who don't think like they do. This is a sectarian mindset and is utterly foreign to orthodoxy. To project onto the orthodox church what you remember your old church being is utterly wrong. The orthodox church is nothing like they've ever experienced before in their lives, no matter how similar things may seem on the surface. And even if you did want to change the orthodox church, to conform to your idea of what church should be, that is not the orthodox way. We don't change the church. We ourselves are changed by the church, or more precisely, changed by Christ through his holy church. The invitation Christ extended to his disciples, and which then they extended to everybody else, was come and see, not come and complain and change things how you want it. <laughs> the latter is idolatry. This person also goes on to say, I can't keep up with the different groups that hate each other. The point is we shouldn't be keeping up with groups that hate each other, period, whether inside the church or outside the church. That is middle school childishness. And we are supposed to focus on our own repentance and not ever anyone else's gossip and supposed beliefs. He went on to say, I've heard plenty of opinions and never listened or seen as many different riffs as I have in the Orthodox Church. Unfortunately, the wide array of opinions that they supposedly listen to either clearly hasn't happened or they weren't in, interested in engaging in it at that moment. They had already stopped their ears and refused to listen to new information from people who are better informed and know what's going on beneath the surface of such superficial matters. Monitoring social media for rifts and thought crimes is not orthodoxy. And it certainly is not how one achieves theosis. This goes back to the previous point of childlessness and minding everyone else's business except their own salvation. And in specific reference to um, something political here, he goes, they go on to say, I think when I witnessed the priest marching with the Marxists, to which they were referring to Black Lives Matter, I had seen enough. I'm not sure what endorsement that got. I just know that I want to stay away, far away from it. 
And the last points are that this person is clearly ignorant of Orthodox Church history. Since many times in previous centuries, clergy have been involved in certain extra-ecclesial groups and activities, for better and for worse. <coughs> they are also ignorant of the Donatist heresy, which was condemned, as our Orthodox faith does not depend on the personal piety of any one individual, be they priest or bishop. Certain Protestants fall apart once their pastor is revealed to be less than moral, and then that's it. The church folds up, people leave, and that's it. End of story. <laughs> that's not the Orthodox Church. Certain people wish to criticize others, yet they themselves have not been initiated into the mysteries, nor have they been immersed in the church for any length of time. At least five years is enough time before opening one's mouth to do anything regarding changing the church. Five years should be enough time to suffice to just say, I don't understand this, help me understand. What is this? I would like to inquire for my own salvation. It's in these times that we feel that we should engage in social media or or at least distributing our opinions as broadly as we think they should go because you know we're so important and we know we think <laughs> others need to know what we have to say. We need to ask ourselves, what good, you know, what good is it serving? Nothing in the Orthodox Church is done by chance. And typically near on the on the uh, western wall, or at least near the exit, is a depiction of the last and dread judgment to remind us as we leave this sacred place, are we going to take this joy of the resurrection with us? How are we going to meet the Savior should we not, you know, have the privilege to fall dead in the middle of church if we, you know, die outside the church walls, as do 99.9% .9 of everyone else, how are we going to have a blessed end? We, too, have a depiction of the final judgment on the back exit. What did the apostle in today's epistle say? Everyone's works will be tried by fire, what sort it is. We're not going to stand before the throne of our Almighty Savior and be asked what sort of political opinions we had or what persons we converted to our political cause? We're going to be asked, what good did we do? How did we change the world? One small act at a time. Did we do it to the least of the brethren? That's what we're going to be judged on. Not how many <coughs> votes for any one particular party we were able to gin up. As it's proven before, they can make up votes out of thin air anyway. So it's not to say that voting is not, un is not unimportant, it's just that voting is not our existence. Our existence is for the kingdom. Our citizenship is in heaven, which nobody can take away as long as I, as I said earlier, as long as we focus on our Savior. So in these times where we want to engage people, you know, we need to remember the words the Holy Apostle Peter. Lord, help me. Lord, save me. That's all we need. We don't need to come up with a long prayer to be in public. That's what the Pharisees did, to be seen, their fighting to be seen before everybody. But we're, when we're in the quiet and dark of our rooms thinking that we need to post something on some corner of the internet, we need to ask ourselves, what, what good is this going to do? Is this contributing to, like, is this building up my works which will be tried by fire? Or was, will this vanish like everything else? Will this hurt my brothers? Will this needlessly divide people? Does this help me see my brothers as they actually are? Or does this reduce them to the sum of their opinions and beliefs? And for that matter, does it make them reduce me to the sum of my own beliefs and opinions? And we need to see ourselves as Christ sees us, as whole, complete human beings 
created in his image and likeness, destined for the kingdom of heaven. So dear brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage all of you not to lose hope, no matter what political persuasion you ascribe to. But as our Savior said, take courage, do not be afraid. If the election doesn't turn out how he wants, so what? The storms and waves will come. We keep our focus above on Christ. And everything will be well with us. And everything that we and everything that we touch and affect. I failed to mention last week, um, it was uh, my eldest daughter's uh, name's day, the day that uh, her patron was, uh, was martyred, St. Lydia the New Martyr. She happened to work in the uh, forestry service in, uh, in, in uh, the Soviet Union, and that particular branch of uh, service was known to be particularly gruff where well, the male employees used harsh language and you know, discussed things typical of blue-collar jobs. But because of her pious example, she, didn't, she was later found out to be a Christian. But just because of her pious example in work, people gradually stopped using foul language and just they started minding their manners. And she didn't say one word, about them, to, one word to them about orthodoxy. It was, just her, it was just her actions. As a favorite saying of uh, Father Alexander Addy, who was my dean at seminary, preach the gospel at all times and use words if necessary. Same thing with our venerable Father Herman of Alaska, who was glorified 50 years ago on this date. Just like our Savior calmed the storm, he too calmed the storm. The natives were scared because there was a storm brewing off the coast of Alaska. He took an icon of the Thetokas, walked on the water, that was it, end of storm. Because he didn't have the grace for the priesthood, he was only ordained to the diaconate, angels would descend at the Theophany and bless the water in the bay. And that was their holy water. And lastly, he is most remembered for his quote, which he said to the Russian traders who were discussing worldly matters. In the meeting, he stood up and said, From this day, from this hour, from this moment, let us strive to love God above all. There it is, the gospel in a nutshell. So next time we're tempted, just step back. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. And if somebody happens to upset us, say, Lord, save me and them. And then we'll be doing our part. Change the world one small step at a time. So, may the Lord continue to bless and keep each and every one of you. May you truly all become the people that God intended you to be. And may you continue to be the salt of the earth and light to those around you. Amen.